Listen to this, from an old warlock, Osiris. Every end crawls from the same pit, rising from the schism to swallow matter, light, and life. It will not be stopped, but here it can be slowed. The shrines of Oryx must be destroyed. What is up, my Squirtalites? It is I, your king, and welcome back to more Let's Play Destiny. And we will do that, but there's actually a lot to talk about going into this mission, so a lot of lore I gotta go over. So first of all, let's talk about the guy who gave us the intro at the beginning of this video, Osiris. Who is Osiris? Well, if you know anything about Destiny, I'm sure you've heard the name. Osiris is actually a warlock, a very, very powerful warlock, in fact. So powerful, and honestly so intelligent and so smart, that he has been banned from the city uh, by the speaker. Yeah, the, uh, so Osiris had some very interesting ideals regarding the way that um, people should be protected, the way the traveler should be used, the way light should be used. He had some very interesting ideas, um, because the thing is, when it comes to the way that the speaker handles things, yes indeed, um, the thing about the speaker is he has some really kind of hardline rules, as in um, there's a big rule that no guardian should ever be willing to uh, succumb itself to the darkness, should never be able to learn from the darkness, and even if to only to utilize its powers, that is still wrong. You're never supposed to do that. You're never supposed to commune with the darkness. And Osiris thought differently. He's not the only one who thought this way, but he was one of those, he was one of the um, few who thought that we could actually use the darkness to our advantage in a way to understand it and defeat it. Now, he wasn't, you know, fully in on this idea like certain other um, individuals such as Toland, but it is something that he believed in, and he believed that certain sacrifices had to be made in order to save, um, in order to save the people of the city, in order to save the guardians. And the speaker wasn't too fond of these ideas, because some of these ideas did, in fact, uh, contest the speaker's ideologies and kind of his rule which of course is technically considered a threat on the city so he was banished and where Osiris is now none of us really know there's a there's a lot of us that think he is um, on Mercury at the moment there's a big belief that that's the case but there is still the possibility that he's not even alive anymore um, but we do know that he was one of the greatest warlocks ever in the battle to save the city against the fallen he was one of the strongest and most powerful combatants in in the entire fight. So he, uh, he's not somebody to be tripled, trifled with. He's very smart. Now he's talking about Oryx, okay? He said every schism crawls from the same pit, is what he said. Now what is that pit exactly? Well, to talk about it, we need to understand who Oryx is. Oryx is actually the king of the hive. He is the king. He is the ruler of everything that is the hive. He is the reason for their being, okay? And here they have a place of worship for him because obviously they're they're going to be religious towards something that is technically their god, right? And that is exactly what Oryx is, is he is their god. But why is that? Who is Oryx? Obviously we're going to learn about him more as time goes on. But the question is, are all the Hive like his children? Is that how this works? Because like I said, the Hive are kind of like insects is what they are. Never well, it, it's a little bit more complicated than that, but I think that is actually the easiest explanation is that, yes, basically every single hive you ever encounter is technically one of Oryx's children. I don't even want to know what they're keeping down there. But it does get a little bit more complicated than that, and we're off to destroy one of his shrines because we do not want him to be able to communicate with uh, his fellow hive. We want to cut them off because once they are cut off, they are incredibly weak. The Hive are aimless. They have no purpose and they have no design in what they're doing if they are not constantly receiving orders from their king, their master. And he's not the only deity that we have to worry about, but he is the most powerful. And I just realized, because I am recording this on a new day from two episodes ago, I need to head to the tower after this one and get some bounties. Totally unrelated, but it kind of just popped up and I suddenly remembered it. But yes. So, 
That is who Oryx is. And again, we'll talk about him a lot more as time goes on. I don't want to get into too much detail on who Oryx is just yet. Just because things are going to get... Things will get a little bit more crazy uh, in the future. So yeah, like I said, this mission is actually pretty big. Um, I have to go through all these Fallen. But we're actually sort of getting towards the end of the Fallen. They're not, they're, they didn't get much deeper than where we're at right now. Y'all can have that. Oh, that just destroyed his wall, like, instantly. I'm kind of shocked, actually. Get out of here. You as well. Yeah, the Hive is so much easier to pop in the head than, than Fallen are. They have so much more forgiving hit, hit boxes. There we go. I think that's all of the machine gun ammo I can carry. Because this is not the slowest rate of fire of machine gun, but it's pretty slow. It's a lot slower than the one we had before, that's for sure. There we go, good damage. Basically every one of these bullets is like as powerful as my scout rifle, but firing way faster, which is kind of a scary thought to think about. I guess it's slightly less powerful, but not by much. Alright, getting there. I don't want to use my Nova Bomb just yet. I don't really have a need to just yet. There we go. Good damage. Got another... I need to start getting more uh, uncommon things here soon. Get out of here. Okay. Doing good. Doing good. Now, something I wanted to talk about before we got too far in this Let's Play is whether or not I'm going to be covering the raids. And in a sense, I am going to be covering the raids, but I'm going to be covering them when the time is applicable in um, the story. I am not going to be covering them myself because I can't. I actually can't. Um, I don't have the people to do it with, so I'm not going to be able. To, I'm not going to be covering the raids um, now because it's just too late in the game's life cycle. Most people have pretty much moved on from Destiny at this point, and. I mean, the Destiny 2 beta is literally going as I'm recording this right now, so it's it's a little bit too late for that. M almost all of my friends that I have ever run raids with have pretty much dropped Destiny for the time being, and I doubt they're going to be able to get their things together for me to be able to record raids with them. Not to mention, um, raids are just not conducive to the less Let's Play experience, like in the slightest, because, you know, it's severe coordination, there's absolutely no way I can live commentate it, like, it's impossible. Um, just because of the nature of the way it is. And honestly, I am, when it comes to the later raids in the game, very inexperienced with them. I, I know Vault of Glass extremely well. I know Temp uh, Crota Zend extremely well. But the other later raids, not as much. Um, so, yeah, we're, I'm not going to be doing those in a Let's Play sense. I'm not going to be actually showing how those are played. Not with my own... Um, own gameplay anyway, and I'm probably not going to go and try to find someone else's gameplay and use that instead either, or ask them, I don't. I just think I'm going to forego that in general, but I am going to give kind of the backstory of the raids and kind of give you guys the lore um, at times that are appropriate, because that is something that is necessary, obviously, to the storyline. And there is a, there is a timeline, uh, there are timeline events when those do take place, you know, in Destiny story that are relevant, and so that's when I'm going to cover it. So yeah, so we're getting through, probably don't need a fusion rifle for this, but I'm going to use it anyway, I didn't even kill him because I'm awesome, get out of here, right, and now in this room, I'm going to run into some thrall here, there we go, goodbye, alright, awesome, let me just reload everything real quick, and let me actually check my weapons and see if any of them are better, uh, that's the Three rounds, no way I'm using that. Um, any of these, the sniper rifle is, but eh. It's still not an uncommon weapon, so I'm going to pass on that. That is technically better. Uncommon uh, bonds don't mean anything. There we go. I can almost use that when I get one more level up. I should be good. Void Walker, let me see. What did I get? I got, ooh, I got Annihilate. Awesome. Increases the size of explosions by Nova Bomb and Grenades. Good stuff. What is this new one? I think I'm going to actually switch to whatever that was. And I'm going to go back to the Vortex Grenade. And I'm going to also unlock Life Support. Because that is actually an amazing perk. Oh, I do like this one a lot better. Yes, please. Right, so let me check one of those. Yeah, that feels a lot better. It's not obstructing my view near as much. Oh, much better. Much better. 
And there's just one over here. Pardon me, sir. I need to kill you. Goodbye. And here we are. This is indeed the Shrine of Oryx. Now, I want you actually to take a look at the architecture of this for a second. Just, just briefly. Um, because, well, this is kind of important. And also, I think this mission glitched, so I'm probably going to have to reload in. Um, but this is actually specifically meant to look like something. Okay? That is meant to actually look like a specific planet. And we'll get into that at a later point. But I just want you to take a look at it, kind of ingrain it into your mind for a minute. And we're good. Alright, I gotta go reload this mission now. Be right back. Let me out under the shrine. I'll look for a weakness. And I fixed it. Okay, I really hate the fact that that bug still exists even to this day. And never actually got fixed. The only one that I know of that still never got fixed, honestly, but it's still it's ugh, infuriating and I always forget about it. If I just find a way to break the link. Let's just hope we don't get sucked into some trans-dimensional vortex. Yeah, that'd be bad. Watch the door. Oh look, it's baby Crota! Hi there! Guys, this is Sardok. He's very big, he's very unhappy, and we have to kill him now. Oh dear, here we go. Alright, so. The Eye of Oryx. Now, honestly, he's not really that difficult. He's actually kind of a pushover. So just keep aiming at the head. Remember, all knights have really big heads. And as soon as I can actually farm some little guys here, I can actually get my super back real fast. In fact... Where are you? Come here, you. And then let me just chuck a Nova Bomb at you. Ah, that's some damage I like to see. Perfect. All right, y'all can be gone. Second. Here we go. Some damage. There we go. He staggered. Move, move, move. Okay, dodge him for a second. Oh, here comes a knight. No, you don't. Glad I staggered him at the last second. Got him! Wow, that did a lot of damage, that fusion rifle shot. There we go. It's weakened. Destroy it. Cool. We severed their connection. The shrine, it was communing with something out there. Their god or king. Well. Not anymore. Whatever it is, it's still out there. Yep, and we'll have to deal with it later. Much, much later. But for now, we have a speaker to go talk to, and we have a Venus to go visit. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so very much for watching this episode of Let's Play Destiny. I hope you all enjoyed it very, very much, and I will see you all in the next one.